Welcome to ManaBluff.com, all friends and lovers, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan here, uh, hosting another M15 draft. Let's see. My eye darts straight to Borderland Marauder. It just happens to be my pet favorite. Dauntless River Marshal, super fun to grab nice and early. You can kind of know uh, that you want to try to hedge toward blue as your second color, but it's perfectly fine. That's all those cards. Revoker's also pretty good. It's just a decent what have you. I guess I should just take the River Marshal. White's a little overdrafted, but I guess red is too. And the upside of the River Marshal is just way better than the Marauder. And we're passing some decent white cards, but you never know. It's not like we're going to get past a triplicate spirit or anything. I do happen to really like uh, white, blue, if you get the good tempo base. Like all the Welkin turns are fun. But still, my, uh, my instinct is to go with the Marauder, mainly because I win more often when I have a bunch of red Marauders. Which makes me kind of want to change my pick order here. Yeah, let's see if white actually happens. It's nice, it's deep, it's good. Hello, Master Predicaments. No, oh, so I guess I lucked out on that one. I mean, I may not actually, I don't want to be super married to these two colors right away, but I'm happy to grab the bomb, sad to pass into the void, it goes so well in these colors if I get there, but it's by far, these are the two by, like way best cards. Looks like someone might have taken a triplicate spirit, it's a common over it. It's only I can imagine taking over master, unless someone was kind of overthinking and wanting to avoid the, uh, the blue danger here. Because even, I think, Lightning Strike, I would pass up for a Master. It's just that good. So blue we want. Someone's probably going to be to our right, avoiding blue. And then uh, I think it's going to be hard to play white. But if it's our secondary color, it could be okay. We'll see. Yeah, blue. Let's get it. Followed by an Illusory Angel, a Divination, a Lightning Strike, and a Flesh to Dust. Holy freaking moly, my friends. Okay. Illusory Angel is really good, but you have to have the deck that supports it, and I don't think it's better than Lightning Strike or Flesh to Dust. So we're just going to go with the Premium Common here and see what happens. Um, I assume someone to my left is white. Like, has to be foreseeing the Triplicate Spirits, whatever, because I don't know what you would take over the Lightning Strike third pick. So I'm pretty sure white's going to go away, and we're going to try to move in on this game plan. Only one uncommon was taken, so another common was taken, which means probably people fighting over trip spirits. Maybe a cone of flame was taken over a lightning strike. I don't know. A uh, little weird here. Flesh to dust I might be the safer pick if that's what I think, but it's too hard to know what the uncommon was specifically. We're just taking the great card and then move forward. Chief Engineer is actually okay as a as a uh, a two drop in blue. In red, there's a Torch and Rosie Golem. Both are good, but I think blue is going to be the main color I see for sure open, just because it tends to be so underdrafted. So I'm kind of interested in sticking to it if they're kind of equal cards, right? I'm planning on this Dauntless River Marshal not happening. I mean, those are really my only picks. It's between in Engineer, Assistant, R Rummaging Goblin. Goblin, probably the better of all the cards. Research Assistant has a little bit more upside than Chief Engineer, but you don't really... I mean, who cares what the artifact spells have Convoke or not that often? Uh, but it's more just uh, you can get a Chief Engineer, so if you end up happening to get like a Juggernaut, the Chief Engineer can... Sorry, you can get a Research Assistant more often. I think I said that wrong. Uh, so we'll take it. I'm not really excited for that pick. I think that pack is more about me kind of seeing what else is open at the table. And blue continues to be open. All the red's gone. Hushwing Griff is very good, though. I'm surprised it's still here. It's not insane. So yeah, better white cards could have been picked. I think I'm just going to avoid the white trap. It's good. Uh, a 2-1 Flying Flash is very nice. But I think I just want the peel here to stick to blue and continue to wait and see what what is being passed to me. All the red's gone. I still can only imagine that white's going to be overdrafted. Nimbus is fine. I like the Runeclaw Bear, but it's the first uh, green spell we've seen that I care about. Black continues to flow a wee bit. So that's something I'm paying attention to. Because we were past the Caustic Tar really late with a Lightning Strike. I just happened to pick up the red instead of the black. So if I had done that, I might go and sign in Blood. Uh, but for here, we're just going to stick to the blue plan. 
and then see where the draft takes us. Here's a child of the night, which I think I like better than anything else. And black seem to be the most open, so I'm happy to grab that. Start moving in that direction. Way better than the research or the necromancer's assistant. Filler red drops, but uh, we haven't seen any of the good red cards. I think after lightning strike, it's going to dry up. So we're just going to go with the child of the night based on reading the rest of the uh, the draft. We'll take the kite fins here. Not that it's insane, but we're just staying on the blue plan, blue flyers for days. We definitely need a lot more in the blue camp to make this deck work, but we're cool there. We'll take the Rot Feaster Maggot. Really heavy top end I'm not stoked for, but that's okay. Take the Crippling Blight, because I think we are officially moving into black, and it's a pretty playable. Um, none of these really are, so we'll just take the blue for signaling. And who knows? One of these days, the dream of a Mind Sculpt deck could come true. Both really great cards in the white and red, but I think uh, black-blue was where the seat wants me to be right now. I think it's the most open. My only real worry is that uh, we did pass... Like this, I would have been so happy if I had grabbed the, uh, the black removal spell, which I always seem to forget names of cards these days because I'm an old man. Ooh, some offering. Don't care. Uh, that just would have been nice on the luck luck route that black was the one that was open but lightning strike is definitely better than flesh to dust oh that's the name of the card yay flesh to dust i remembered good me but because i passed that fourth pick i'm worried about someone being black next to me and then picking up the black going this way so not an insane pack but master predicaments pretty awesome peel from reality pretty top notch as well hello resolute archangel lightning strike flesh to dust Two lightning strikes makes me very happy. I'm not going to do the Resolute Archangel. I don't want to thin it out. And I think two lightning strikes is better than Resolute Archangel anyway. Flesh to Dust would be the, uh, I think, the more conservative pick based on, again, what I saw was open coming from the other direction. So I'm going to go that route. Yeah, we're going to be disciplined. I'm going to be disciplined. I will not take the lightning strike. But man, two lightning strikes. Hard to lose in that. But we just saw no red coming from our right, so alas, we must be kind to ourselves. Gosh, Borderland Marauder. Siege Warmer is great, too. I think we just have to take the Path Mage here. We need twos and threes, that's for sure. Um, but I don't think I want a Research Assistant like this over a more powerful Path Mage. And having to take flesh to dust means I'm, I'm moving away from the red game plan. We're going to see red this pack, but we should also see some good blue. Yeah, that's really the only decision. I don't, I'm not a... Military intelligence only works in, uh, in blue-white, I believe, with tons more flyers. Unmake the Graves could come back, but that's really more of the, uh, the green-black strategy. And I'm not jumping into green, even though Siege Worm is pretty much the best card in the pack, followed up by Barland Marauder. All right, staying disciplined. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. All right, I'm taking the lightning strike mainly because what my other option is a stupid blue card or typhoid rats. Uh, and yeah, we're just gonna I don't know figure out what happens next. But two lightning strikes. Give it three lightning strikes. Here's a Willforge golem. It has convoked thanks to my chief engine. No, it already has convoked. Huh? All right, real decision here. Uh, divination is quite nice and we're definitely plain blue so I like that but if we're gonna ditch our black to play red we kind of want to start filling in the uh, the red drop slot we actually need three so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Rough Rider will forge golem would be nice but I think I need to prioritize the curve here and that means I just made an official decision to rock this we'll take turn to frog I think it's better to have Turn to Frog as a trick that works as a removal spell than having Encrust, which is kind of a dorky removal spell. And if Blue is underdrafted, as I think, I'll probably get an Encrust when I want it. Or at least some point in this draft. See? Encrust. Though I think I'm going to take the Scrapyard Mongrel. We're going to be in the colors that want artifacts. And I have a Chief Engineer already. So I'm anticipating the Scrapyard Mongrel being good. Because I'll probably get like an Aeronaut Tinker and in general care about it. 
So yeah, let's do that. Plus, I want to be filling out my two, threes, and fours with decent creatures. And in, in blue-red, Mongrel's going to be nice. There's an Avarice Amulet, which I'll grab here. Not hoping to play it, but being with two lightning strikes and being in the burn colors means it might be better than what my opponent's doing. And again, it's an artifact, so it kind of goes with what's happening. And I mean, I'm not moving back into black. There's just green being thrown around which is the only color we didn't see at first. All right, we might splash black. Merc Lurker's good. There's no other pick for us anyway. Uh, it's not like we can splash the flesh to dust, but, you know. Things, things can get nutty. Hot soup I don't care about. We'll just take another three drop. So annoying. I don't have three lightning strikes right now. I'll have to ponder that some more, see if that was a good pick or not. We'll take the military intelligence. It might make the deck. I highly doubt it. Could be right to take the Brawler's Plate because of the Mongrel. Yeah, I'm actually more likely to play it than Military Intelligence. Like I said, there's really no reason to play Military Intelligence unless you're in white and blue, of course. Void Snare might make the cut if we end up getting a much more aggressive deck. I don't see that happening. I see it much more being the Divination deck. But you never know. Right now we just want to get to our big flyers. We have a two drop, so two drops are numero uno priority in our last pack. Our top end is not great, but it's fine. We have a path mage to sink mana into, plus two good five drops, two dorky six drops. So aside from like Kona Flames, Lightning Strikes, or um, Stoke the Flame, we're pretty much taking two drops. Here, obviously the Cone of Flame is a slam pick. This will probably table, though I don't want another uh, three drop that's just a three two. I'd rather have the Sentinel to turn on the Mongrel or maybe get the Will Forged Golem back. We'll definitely see Divination since the first Divination tabled. Yay, great removal. And that's probably the only red we're gonna see now. <laughs> Hopefully some late two drops. How interesting this deck would have been and infinitely better if I had picked the red um, Marauder and the uh, the Lightning Strike over the Flesh to Dust. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, my deck would be insane at that point. All right, welcome turn I like. Um, just to be aggressive, we want two drops, as said, and if we can get this deck to be a little bit more on the offensive, I'll be happy. And there's really no great reason to splash the Merc Lurker yet, so I'm not even stoked that I have the first one, though it's certainly playable. So we'll grab the Welkin turn. Grave Digger's a reason to splash black a little bit, but not over a really good two drop. And the Forge, we're not splashing white, so who cares? Could splash white for the River Marshal, but it's kind of the reverse order. It's not how you want to be splashing that card. That's actually an easy pick. Juggernaut! Jace's Ingenuity! Enforcer's good too. Uh, I'm taking the Juggernaut. I don't think this is an Ingenuity deck, though I would certainly play it, but like I said, we have things to do in the high end that's very powerful. We want lower stuff. Could argue taking the Enforcer, but I think Juggernaut is obviously just a powerhouse. We'd love for this Peel to wheel. Um, Juggernaut also turns on the Mongrel. Not that that's a huge deal, but it's nice. Don't have to worry about this Avarice Amulet. Though I might even play this Amulet now. Since I have three pieces of burn, I should be the one able to kill my opponent's creatures versus the other way around. Might just stay in the sideboard, though. Uh, and I think we'll get at least one of these cards back. It's getting later in the pack, but um, it should work out. Boom. Inferno Fist! Uh, let me just double check. I don't think the, the Paragon is something we want, because I don't think I have enough red. Yeah, I only have two, three. Yeah, definitely don't want the Paragon. We're probably going to see another Rough Rider. And again, only two drops are things I care more about. The Fist, though, is, is obviously the best card here. Negate for the Cyborg would be fine, but this is a decent dude. Really want some better creatures on the lower end. Do I want a Nimbus of the Isles? It'd basically replace a Miner's Bane, which would be good, not great. I could take the Evolving Wilds if I really want to splash black for the Merc Lurker, which is okay, but not great. But if I'm short playables, I'm going to have to load up on the, on the top end over here, the fives. And at, like I said, at worst, like it's replacing the miner's bane, just making a you know a better late drop. Frostlink is awesome. 
I was almost going to be excited for the Bronze Sable, because I need two drops, and, you know, an artifact doesn't hurt the Scrapyard Mongrel, but Frostling is just way too good. So we'll slam that guy into our three-drop slot. Still worried about the two-drop slot, but it looks like we're just not going to be the aggressive build. Coral Bear is still very good in a deck. Uh, we're not doing the insult artifact thing. Uh, we'll just know that we're looking to go a little bit slower... The Evolving Wilds tables, or another one comes around, we'll probably grab it, because the Merclicker now will be good if we're taking things slow and just get to our big old bombs and our flyers and stuff. That's the strategy. Uh, we're not going to play the first Void Snare. They do get better in multiples, but since we're not that tempo deck without the uh, the two drops, we don't really care. Do I want this Dark Steel Citadel? What's our mana looking like? Just for value for the Mongrel? Because I'm not playing the Hammer Hand, let's just be honest about that. Makes the Cone of Flame a little bit harder to cast, but I think I'd still play it just for the mongrel sake, especially if we end up late picking up another thing that matters with artifacts. We didn't. Glacial Crasher, though, I think I'll replace with the Kite Fins. Definitely grabbing it over Tyrant's Machine. Don't know which one I'm going to play yet, which one I want to main deck versus the other. This does make me want to splash black a lot more, having two Jirbi Merc Lurkers. I'm taking it no matter what, versus cutting like an Overwhelm. 1-3s could be good against the opponent. Peel table. We thought something would peel. I'm really happy to have a second peel. Um, now I will go ahead and cut a playable card, since the other ones are not. Crippling Blight's very good. Goodbye. This guy actually does get played, surprisingly. Alright, here's the deck. Is there anything else I want to jump in here from my colors? I don't think so. Yeah. Definitely some interesting decisions on what card to cut and how I want to build the deck. Don't know if I want the Dark Steel Citadel. We're a little... I mean, we just barely made playables and some of them are stupid, but other ones are also very good. And here's the bust down of the deck. Number of decisions to be made, but first let's talk about the sideboard. I just have these two dorky artifacts and a miner's bane for the sideboard. I definitely want... Uh, uh, this guy I'm only bringing in, I can't even imagine for what, because I like the other six drops way better. It's way better for our mana, we're base blue, etc, etc. Avarice Amulet, I might main deck, or I would probably main deck if I had that third lightning strike that I had, just because I feel like I would be the favorite to be able to uh, maintain control of the amulet. Uh, but since I don't have that through Lightning Strike, it's just not really that great, of course, we all know that. My sideboard down here, there's really nothing black worth splashing. It's good to know Crippling Blight or Rot Feast or Maggot are there, but Crippling Blight you don't really splash for. Rot Feast or Maggot, I already have good things to do at 5. Flesh to Dust is just too hard to splash, of course, at double black. So, a couple decisions. First of all, I need to make a cut. You'll notice I'm at 24 right now. Second, I have to decide um, how I want my lands to be, and that might decide what I cut. Right now, the Merc Lurker would be one of the first things I want to get rid of. Uh, I could cut a Rough Rider instead, since I'm not looking to be aggressive, but I think it just trades with more. Um, and I just like that, I mean, I would always prioritize power over toughness, unless it's an X one. Could also cut one of the six drops, since we have, again, plenty of late game action. So... The real question is, is this Merc Licker going to be great? Am I going to be splashing a Swamp? And I honestly don't know. I'm interested in this Citadel just to get the Mongrel turned on, because right now I only have a Juggernaut. Uh, but so it's not like a 3 3 for 4 is horrible, so I don't really need to overwork to get the Dark Steel Citadel in there. Uh, I'm trying to think if I can be greedy with, uh, since I'm so light on red, maybe I can just have one Swamp, one Dark Steel Citadel, and then just do a, uh, a standard blue-red split. The main issue is this Cone of Flame is double red, so I want to be able to cast that, of course. It's so powerful. And Inferno Fist is kind of like a double red spell. It's pretty rare you want to play it with just one red out and leave your dudes open. Let's just see what the mana looks like with a Dark Steel Citadel in there and one Swamp. So if we do this, we need to add a Swamp, and then am I comfortable with only nine islands? and five swamps. That's looking pretty light already. Five swamps is fine for the number of red spells we have, but it's still light. And uh, nine islands is okay, but it'd be great to have ten. Oh, I still have to make a cut, right? So we get one more land. Hold on a second. We get one more land. Six mountains. 
This is pretty greedy. I think the Darksteel Citadel is a little bit greedy. I think we're just going to play the Mongrel as a 3-3 three, three for 4. It'd be great to have a 5-3, but whatever. I actually do want to play one Swamp for the upside of two Merc Lurkers. I know I'm an Evolving Wild, so it's just if I happen to draw it, we'll be fine. And so then instead, we're going to go ahead and play 10 Islands, 6 Mountains, 1 Swamp. I think that'll be pretty nice. Uh, I think 6 will be enough to get Cone of Flames online. It does mean we keep the Merc Lurkers in. And then I'm probably going to end up cutting one of the 6 drops here. Because we just want to stay alive till we get there. Yep. That's the game plan. So we'll go there. we got to ditch this Dark Steel Citadel. I think I'm going to ditch the Kite Fins. We already have some good flyers. And we're not a super heavy creature deck. I mean, this guy actually can be really nice when you play it. And you get to play one or two other creatures and keep bashing through. But we're not tempo. We're actually more control. Which is not where you want to be in these colors. So it's kind of scary. But I think uh, we're just going to have like one or two threats that's going to close out the game. While the rest of it we're just trying to like, uh, you know, sort of control out. That's how it's going to be. We'll take this into the first round.